welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast, the only podcast where we're too poor to afford those Olympics on fat. Because that's, you know, hot topic right now. Is... No Zempic? No, is that what you're going to call it? The mm-hmm. No Zempic episode? No Zempic. Yeah. Is that what we're talking about today? That'll be part of it. Oh, I mean, gosh. I mean, that's kind of, you know, timely since South Park just dropped their episode. Lizzo. Well, that's not the name of the episode. It's the end of obesity. Mm-hmm. But they will prescribe you Lizzo mm-hmm. for body positivity, self image, body positivity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When she dies of a heart attack, will will people still be positive about her body? You only live once, right? YOLO. Okay, but do you actually want to do the things that you dream of doing, or do you just want to eat and die? Everybody's goals in life are different, Andrew. My goals are not to eat and die. I haven't died yet. I haven't died yet. You can keep looking at me all you want. Okay. So, today, talking about a little bit of that. Oh, by the way, this is Nona, for people that are just joining. I'm Andrew. We haven't introduced ourselves recently. That's probably why people are saying, who the fuck are these people? Because we don't actually say our names. Okay. I'm Nona. <laughs> I'm a mom of four. The end. You don't have to actually go that far in introducing yourself. The end. Visit, that, that is all I am. Visit NonaPhelps.com. Link is in the description. You can get insurance. Everything except life insurance and medical insurance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everything except that. So your family is not covered when you die of obesity. Good to know. Is that is it basically the same as uh, turning off your birthdays? Turning off what? Yeah. What are you talking about? When you turn off your birthdays, when you no longer have birthdays, because you're in the ground. I have. N- <laughs> I have never heard that phrase term. What? Your birthday. Turning been, off your, your birthdays birthday been because you're from in the, the calendar. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, I sent you over, well, we watched a video, I had you watch a video yesterday about some really bad marketing and advertising, so I thought maybe we could talk about some of the better ones that we've seen in in recent years. What are some good ones that we've seen, Andrew? We're not into that yet. I'm still introducing the episode. Oh, yeah, and you haven't reintroduced yourself. You are Andrew, father of three dogs. Okay. I already said I'm Andrew and you're Nona. I didn't have to do it a second time. Um, visit America's Technology Center of Excellence. Link is down in the description. Okay. Yep. That's the only context that, that you're going to get. So, moving on. Moving on. Talk about some stuff. Um, I did actually want to bring up a couple things before we jump into the episode related to a question that I brought up about Brandon Herrera and the, the primary and the turnout. So, I did find the numbers. It took okay. me a while to find it. There's What a, are the numbers? There's a, there's a, I asked for the age demographic because I predicted that it was the 55 plus that turned out. It it, it wasn't, I didn't copy that in here. So I wanted to know that. Okay. It was, it was basically, I think it was like 64%. They it's, it's estimated because it's not public data. What, like what they actually are there. They have to have people go out there and stand there and be like, looks like a male, looks like a male, looks like a male. But it's from a it's from a source that has the public data, the voting records, called Ballotpedia. They're okay. a nonprofit organization that it's basically just a wiki for elections. Okay. So, in the primary back in March, mm-hmm. they had a turnout of fifty seven thousand six hundred thirty. In the runoff, they had a turnout of twenty nine thousand six hundred thirty nine. So, half half of the turnout for the runoff. Wow. Which I kind of thought was going to be the case because primaries already have a lower turnout than the general election does. Mm-hmm. In the primary, Tony had 45.1% of the vote with 25,988 votes. Brandon had 24.6% of the vote with three other candidates. Right. Making up the remainder. Right. With 14,201 votes. In the runoff, Tony had 50 point, finished with 50.7. Mm-hmm. Brandon finished with 49.3. Mm-hmm. So it's less than a percentage. Mm-hmm. Uh, 15,023 versus 14,616. Now, here's an interesting 
number that I was looking into, Tony's last runoff in 2020 was even closer. 45 votes was the difference between Tony winning and losing in 2020. Wow. <clears throat> 45 votes. And then in the general election in 2020, mm -hmm. Tony only barely beat out the Democrat that he was running against. It was like By three, how many like votes? 3%. But I mean, the the voter turnout. I have the number here, um, or maybe I don't. I thought I did. It's okay. You try, idiot. You try. no, I do have it. I do have it. Twenty twenty general election had just under three hundred thousand, two hundred ninety five thousand, four hundred fifty seven voters. Three hundred thousand votes in that same, uh, whatever you want to call it, district, right? Mm -hmm. So the turnout for this runoff mm -hmm. that just happened was one tenth. Of the voter That's turnout crazy. for the general election. Yeah. Yeah. And the Democrat. What that, do you think is the cause for the low turnout? People people just assume that they only need to vote in the general election. Mm -hmm. Most people don't care about anything else. They just want to they just want to vote for the president. They don't care about anything else. Okay. I, they're, can, they're, I can see that. There there's people that okay they're going to raise taxes. And but again, I wanted to know the age demographic because I truly believe it is the and older. you need to look into it. I literally told you. No. you need If you're interested in something, you need to look it up. No, that's yes. okay. Yeah, you need to invest in the show like I do. You need to look up stuff yourself. Um, But the, the Democrat that he's running against this election mm -hmm. performed far better in their primary than the candidate that he ran against in the last general election in the midterm tw in 2022 so you're saying that he po he possibly has a chance of losing to a democrat wait, wait, wait. I, oh i was talking about the democrat the democrat yeah. possibly has a chance yeah. to win yeah the voter period. turnout the voter turnout for the primary for the democrats this cycle mm -hmm. was better than the turnout in the 2020 cycle However, I feel like a couple of episodes ago when we were talking about the AK, you said it's Texas, Republican state, it's a win. So that that broad swath contains two, more than two, but two widely known major military installations. You have Fort Bliss and then you have Lackland Air Force Base. And next to Lackland, you have uh, Fort Sam Houston and Camp Bullis. And there's a bunch of others scattered mm -hmm. throughout there. So you have rapidly changing demographic within city. And right. then you also have service members, PCSing coming in and out, family members, things like that changing all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. Maybe it'll just be another really, really close race. Maybe. Because 2020 was close in the presidential Are you going to continue to follow it now that your AK guy is out? No. So we'll never know. No, we'll know because it'll be, it's going to be talked about forever because Brandon essentially has taken a page out of the Democrats playbook as far as like people like AOC, where it's more of a, and this isn't a slide against Brandon, but AOC and the, the people like her from New York are playing the popularity game. They're not actually intelligent. They don't actually understand policy. Mm-hmm. They just know who their voters are. And so they'll tell them whatever the fuck they want to hear. Just, con just continually getting reelected. Mm -hmm. They're not actually going to do anything in office. They're not going to accomplish anything. They're just going to cry. They're going to say, oh, I tried to do this for my people. But everybody else said no, bad. Okay. And that's what Tony is doing. He doesn't actually do anything for the people that vote for him. Mm-hmm. He tries to toe the line. That's why he goes on CNN. It's because he knows that he can get people that are not sure which direction they want to go. But, oh, well, I guess if I have to vote for a Republican, I'll vote for Tony because he has pitched gun control and voted for gun control as a Republican. So now I can go vote for a Republican to fuck Republicans over. Okay. Anyways. There's people that study this stuff. It's going to go on forever. Well, I'm not a poli sci major, so I'm not one of those people. If you say so. If I say so. So we can jump into the 
advertising unless you want to talk about the south park thing and the the ozempic because i know i know you really wanted to talk about ozempic like a week ago or two weeks ago yeah i i think it needs to be a whole episode by itself though no no. but anyways can't dedicate an episode to a pharmaceutical company we talk about what you want to talk about let's talk about that south park episode and how okay they brought up they brought up a lot of South Park has to be one of the most well-researched shows. He models his life after. No, South they, Park. they they only <laughs> me- they only mess things up when it's intentionally done. Like they don't the the uh, perfect analogy. You know, every time you watch a movie and there's somebody that's uh, asystole or flatlined or whatever, and they're like, "We need to shock them." No, that's not how that works. Have you seen how people are bringing up that South Park predicted the Diddy? situation and i don't know what year it came out i uh, you, you know i've never watched south park prior to you everybody always talks about he's only made me watch two of the most recent south park movies by the way Did so i am watch the um covid episodes no you made me watch the movie that just came out and the one right before it whatever that one Red was or whatever no the uh Damn, they've been doing so many. Really, they have a contract that they have to do a bunch of like ten. Of Basically, I I only have two under my the belt. Verse. that one. Where sure. Cartman became a girl. I don't know. You made me watch the one. Um... Was it the one where they were making fun of Jake Paul, Logan Paul, or whatever? With the no, not that one. I don't know what that is. No, where they go on a hunt for the the weird... Not, Man Bear Pig? Yes. That's not recent. Oh, okay. Well, you made me watch that one. Whatever. Everybody needs to see okay. it. It's a cultural... He, he made me watch the Man Bear Pig one. That's a cultural thing. And then this Ozempic one. So I've only seen two. I don't think you've seen more than that. No, I haven't. So, so Man Bear Pig exists. <laughs> We've already talked about that just recently. Uh, the, Man versus bear episode. Blah blah blah, yeah. blah 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 blah. <clears throat> so they opened up the episode strong. Yeah, so strong. Prescribing Lizzo. <laughs> yes, yes. You might shit out your ears though. Yeah. Watch out. Which I, I so somebody and you said that you saw the reaction. I didn't realize that the video is actually a side by side, so it's her reacting as she sees it. Yeah, but I didn't. So I didn't actually watch it. Like I uh, saw that she has reacted to it, but I didn't actually watch the react because I didn't know we were talking about this today. So I was going to watch it before she we had, talked about she it. She had terror and horror in her eyes as if she knew that prescribing maybe, her was going to be a terrible thing. Maybe, just maybe. Body positivity isn't all it is. Yeah. Interesting. It's a good way to uh, convince your kids to never eat healthy or exercise or do anything that benefits their health in the future prescribing lizzo yeah just in general body positivity oh there's a difference between bashing somebody for their body and talking good about them about their body and just not saying anything at all but everybody should love themselves okay but that's not everybody else's problem okay if you want to love yourself in the way that you are and you're happy with the way that you are, then it doesn't matter what other people say. Okay. Okay. You can't force that onto other people. And this goes in all spectrums of the world. You cannot force yourself if, if we wanna, onto others, if, period. If it doesn't want, matter what size you are. If we want to have a successful and booming population and for our, our population not to decline... We have to promote healthy eating, healthy habits. And some people need that extra nudge. Okay. Um, you know I'm right. But you can flip it around and you can also talk about like the marathon people who have all the stickers on the back of their car of like 26.1, whatever. And... You could flip it around and be like, All they're, right. just, "They're overdoing it, like vegans do." That's mm-hmm. not. That's so. Not, I'm going to put a sticker zero point zero. Those people though are not trying to convince you to go run a marathon. They're just telling you that they're better than you, right? 
And you could argue the same for body positivity on mm. larger individuals. I'm no. putting it on you. Stop eating McDonald's. <laughs> Go walk your dog. Love the skin that I am in. No. No. They need to get healthy. It's a... <clears throat> There are several psychological disorders that we're pay basically saying, oh, it's not a problem right now because we're pandering mm -hmm. to that demographic. You're okay. You're okay. Okay. But that trickles down to the next generation. When we're lenient on things like this, mm -hmm. people think that it's okay for it to continue. So they put their children into a position where now they're overweight and their parents won't even help them. Okay, but Ozempic is not the answer, I'm is the saying, point. I'm not saying, yeah, I'm not saying right. Ozempic. So it's prevention. Like during childhood, you can prevent them from reaching that point. You can prevent your child from becoming obese. You can prevent your child from becoming diabetic. Like but, the mom who's currently on trial for only feeding her toddler Mountain Dew. Did they give a reason why? Like, was she just too poor to do anything? Or is it like the people that lock their kids in the closet for 18 hours? Probably both. I don't know anything about this story. So I that's, don't really either. I but wanna, that's... I, I'm not excusing anybody doing that to their children mm -hmm. or uh, abusing their children like that or in any way. But I want to know what their excuse like what could they possibly say to the police or possibly say to their attorney that they think is going to get them out of the situation like what actually is going on in their mind both as they did it and now while they're trying to get away with it like how do, how do they rationalize that within themselves i don't think that's they, what i want to know i don't think they do i think they do I mean, you go to the store and you'll buy food only for the kids and then you'll try and starve and then I have to go and buy food for you. It's not that I try to starve. It's that I always put them first. Not, always. Okay, but that, sure. You're, we're talking about Ozempic here. Don't misconstrue and make people think that I'm anorexic because I'm okay. certainly not. But what I'm saying is you'll come home with a full load of groceries. Right, for the children because yeah. they're the priority. Yeah. But you also need to feed yourself so that they have a mom. Okay. So. And speaking of. So they can go without. Did I tell them what happened this morning? They can go without a $9 box of cereal so that you can have two cucumbers. <laughs> They'll be okay. So speaking of cucumbers, I. Speaking of cucumbers, <laughs> what's she going to tell us? Well, no. So this, this, I'm digressing here a little bit, but we're talking about cucumbers. So, um. I, al I always feel judged at the store when I buy cucumbers because I always think that people are like, mm, what's she doing with those? I'm fucking eating them. Well, this morning, I almost choked to death on a fucking cucumber. Eating them. And <laughs> it wasn't his cucumber. It was an actual mm -hmm. cucumber. <laughs> I had put two in my mouth at once instead Ooh. of one. Okay, there you go. And That's it just slipped. That's gonna live it on forever. slipped down my throat and I almost choked to fucking death. And there's your clip. <laughs> you come here. People can take and clip our videos on their so, own. You should do that. You should also like and subscribe. <laughs> 69,000 of you have watched our videos, the shorts and our podcast. His favorite number, 69. It's, yeah, it's like 69,387 or something No, like 69,420. We're close, mm. or we were close. Mm -hmm. We jumped over that the next time I refreshed the screen. Wow. It's hard to stop 69, that. 69, 69. Yep. So. <laughs> so, miss, yeah. Miss chokes on two yeah, cucumbers. Choked on two cucumbers <clears throat> at the same fucking time. So, the, the episode implied. Initially, I thought it was funny. Like, well, I mean, I, the entire thing was funny. Not just initially. The episode was funny. We're back to South Park. the movie. Park. It's a movie, technically. Yes. That's what you made me watch last night. Um, when they were like, listen to Lizzo, listen to Lizzo, I thought it was like, oh, I'm going to hate myself because I'm listening to Lizzo. But then when they were walking into the doctor's office and they were shitting out their ears, <laughs> so, oh, okay, because her music is shit. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Are you mostly shitting out of your anus or your ears? My ears. <laughs> It was bad. It was really bad. It wasn't bad. It was amazing. But would you ever take Ozempic or anything similar to Ozempic? 
No, because I know I can buy steroids and go to the gym. Well, you have been trying to lose weight for the entire time we've been together. Mm. So you say at least. He's been this size since we met. He's no. been supposedly trying to lose weight ever since. No, I was 255 when we met. Now I'm 275. Okay, so he gained 20 pounds. Yep. And the whole time that you were with me, you've been saying that you were trying to lose weight. Yeah. But gained 20 pounds. I gained 20 pounds very fast, and I just haven't lost it. Okay. So in those three years, you've never considered... It's almost been four years. Next month. Crazy. Time flies when you're having so much fun. I know. I'm the most fun person you've ever met. <laughs> and you've never considered? No. Hmm. I've out-trained my diet before in the past. I know I can again. Okay. I just am not going to run. That's the only difference between then and now. I know. That I don't want to run. I know that I can do it in the gym. However, I also know that I can get significantly stronger without doing that. And that is what has been happening. I went from whatever that long break was that I wasn't in the gym. Mm -hmm. All I, of last year. I got back. No, not all. I was back in the gym. I got, I got right back into uh, like my normal workout routine within weeks. Mm -hmm. My normal like routine weights the normal reps and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And now I'm advancing towards my PR faster than I ever have in the past. That's good. And in the past, I've taken all different kinds of stuff, pro hormones, things like that. And now I'm just doing what does that mean? What, what's pro, pro hormones? Hormone? Yeah. What's that? They're like precursors or, um, they're not, I mean, they're dr Everything's a drug, but, um supplements that help is that the stuff that you were like ordering a couple of years ago yeah yeah okay they they're they're um precursors that help your body naturally produce more of specific hormones so like if you want to increase testosterone production you don't actually just take testosterone okay you take uh supplements that help your body make more testosterone right, right, naturally right that makes sense so like there's people that take like testosterone therapy there's options if your body cannot make testosterone on its own it you're more along the lines of like a diabetic in that case okay where you have to be given that uh hormone okay but there's also th so like nitric oxide for example is another is another thing so you take you take nitric oxide supplements to help increase, and of course now I can't fucking think. Anyway, people, these people know what I'm talking about. Okay, well, I don't because oh. I've never taken anything, but we know a couple of people who are on Ozempic, and I have seen a visual difference okay. in their but size. When you, okay, my goal isn't to lose weight. My goal is to lose fat. There is a difference. Mm-hmm. Building... I, just to be clear, I am not encouraging you to know, do it. Okay. Just, just in that's order, not what I was saying at all. In order to build muscle, mm -hmm. it requires an amount of caloric intake, body fat, right. different proteins, nutritional intake. And men and like women that. are obviously very different in that. And I would say overwhelmingly, the Ozempic market are probably my demographic, moms. Okay. But trying to lose the that way the way 10, that, 15 pounds the way that people are portraying it at mm -hmm. least how south park was portraying it and how some other people that i've talked to are portraying it is that once you stop it's not like getting um once you stop you gain it right back not if you don't eat as much if you continue exercising you won't okay but overwhelmingly the human population thinks Again, it's a set it and forget it thing. Right, right. If I do it one time, I'm here forever. Mm -hmm. When realistically what was happening is their eating and their dietary habits, their exercise habits and everything like that plateaued. Mm -hmm. And they just kind of stayed one weight. So they were actually, even though they were continuing to eat, 
they were maintaining because right. they weren't increasing what they were, their input and output. That, I mean, were... I'll be honest. That's where I'm at. I haven't worked out in well in like a year. So... And I'm just maintaining all the work that I put into years and years. No, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying that their weight gain is being maintained. They're not going up or going down, but that's also because nothing else has changed. Your input is equal to your output. Okay. So if you put a gallon of water in your body, mm -hmm. one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to get a gallon back out or you're going to retain part of it. Okay. If you retain part of it, you're going to gain weight. Okay. Same thing with food. Same thing with everything else. Okay. So you either take supplements to remove that, you take drugs to remove that, or you exercise to remove that. Being sedentary, once your body reaches a critical mass for your metabolism, you'll just kind of stay. If you ate the same meals, mm -hmm. the same portions, at the same time, every single day, you would never gain or lose weight. You would have micro fluctuations, but you would- That's what I'm saying I'm at. Okay, you made it more seem like you were maintaining your muscle. No, no, I certainly do not have the muscle that I, oh. uh, but I'm saying that I haven't gained or lost anything, even though I'm not working out. So like my, my goal now. glued to my computer all the fucking time. My, my goal now by my 37th birthday is to join the 1500 club. What? Oh, what? what is the 1500 Bench, club? Bench, squat, deadlift. Total, total weight between those three exercises, okay. 1500 pounds. All right. Um, today is June 1st. So you have six months. Yeah, I know. Wow. Okay. Maybe I'll finally start back at the gym. It won't take me that long. You've got this, babe. I know. I'm already back to 515, 525 on deadlift. So I'm already one third of the way there. Wow. I'm right at 300 again on bench. So that puts me at 800. And uh, squat, I haven't tried for a PR since I've been back in the gym, but okay. I can throw 400 plus and walk away perfectly fine, which is crazy for my knees. And your back that is royally yeah. fucked. So that's what? That's that's already a 1,200 total. Wow, you got this. Yeah. I think the, the one that I need to work on the most to increase is uh, my bench. Because I, I know I can get my I know I can get my deadlift there. I know I can get my squat there. The squat takes a little bit longer to develop like uh, increased you know, weights over time. Mm-hmm. Um, but bench has been my easiest improvement or my easiest to improve exercise over the years. Okay. I went in one year, I went from being stuck at a plateau of 275 to hitting 350 in like three months. Wow. Yeah. And what do you attribute that to? Just having a routine that I know works. Very specific and targeted exercises for certain muscle groups that I know that I was weak in and my stabilizer muscles and things like that. I do a lot of things that I learned from an NFL buddy of mine, like JM Press, which sucks. I hate JM Press, but JM Press. Are you going to take Cooper to the gym with you this summer? Yeah. He's going to go every day with me every morning all summer. Since there's no school drop-off, he's going to come with me first thing early in the morning. Nice. And there's no air conditioning at the gym. Mm -hmm. It's a big-ass warehouse with no air conditioning. There's barely air movement at all. You go there because you want to work out and get in shape. The place is owned by three UFC fighters and the NHL player, uh, FIBA, I think is what it's called. It's like the European NBA um, and a couple of power lifters, nationally uh, awarded, whatever. I don't know what they're, but you have like the Arnold and all these other organizations that all fucking nitpick each other and like, oh, well, if you did that one, then you cheated. But then they're like, <laughs> really? Yeah, they all have different rule sets. And so, like you have like people that are like, oh, I'm all natural. And you have other people that um, are allowed to use supplements. And you have people that use equipment. So you have people that use like these um, like rubber band, like um, straps that come across your chest and like attached to your biceps. So like, yeah, there's there's people that wear entire. What? There's people that wear compression suits. And they'll completely like pretend this is your back. This is your yeah. chest and stomach. They'll completely arch and like their body's like this. And so they're, they're 
chest is right here and they're actually benching they're actually doing like a almost like a dip <laughs> there's certain organizations that count that as being a successful movement to me i want to do the movement in a way that improves the aesthetic of my body not what wins me too. the awards for i want you to improve your aesthetic of your body too or how much weight i can lift so there's like there's a there's a thing going around i don't know who started it but it was a sled push and okay. it was something about there was nine plates on the sled okay and one of my buddies was like oh i don't even think i have a sled that can hold nine plates in my gym and i was like oh i do and then um zach veteran with a sign he did it and he was on the struggle bus and i was like oh i'll do it and then isn't there- he a little dude though um, I don't know how tall he is. He, I mean, he appears to be like maybe five eight, five nine, something like that. I don't know. It's a pocket size, anyways. Sure, he's, that's your size. He's literally the same. Right. Size as you. If a if a man is the same size as me or smaller, they're sure. pocket sized. So I have videos of me years ago mm-hmm. pushing cars and trucks and pulling vehicles and parking lots and stuff like that. Okay. But there's there's a difference. Like when you when you're pushing a vehicle, you have uh, decreased rolling resistance because you're using the vehicle's forward momentum to help continue pushing it forward. Mm-hmm. You're just trying to you have to get it started. But once you get it started, you can progressively move it faster up up until a specific point, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas a sled, you have all that friction. And it just, it doesn't keep going. I've never, I've never every, before, so I can't. Every movement is stop, start, mm. stop, start, stop, start. Did you just, what was that? I wonder if that's on camera. <laughs> Probably. Anyways. So, yeah. Stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, right? Like, it just, you're, unless you're on a surface that's really slick. But then you're also competing. I'm just dying today. Yeah. You're also competing with it with your feet. So if your feet are slipping, you don't have traction and the floor is tacky and you can't move the sled, it's not the same as pushing a car. You gonna be okay over there? <laughs> yes. Okay. I say so. Anyways. So yeah. I can push a much heavier vehicle on a flat surface than I can a sled. I already stopped listening to you. Sure you have. Somebody that's out there with a rope pulling like a fully loaded semi and like crawling on the ground, right? Pulling like tens of thousands of pounds or more. Mm-hmm. They can't do that on a sled. They cannot put that much weight on a sled and push it. It doesn't work. Okay. Anyways. <clears throat> so it looks impressive though. Okay. Because you're like, I can push a truck. I can push a car. And all you do is push 400 pounds on a sled. It looks, it appears better, but it's not. Functionally, <laughs> it's different. Um, speaking of pocket, oh, um, no, you're not. No, I'm not because I don't have $1,200 a month to is that what it actually costs, or is that just what South Park said it costs? No, 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 it I believe costs about $1,200 a month. Um, because insurance doesn't cover it because I'm not diabetic. Go get yourself some pre diabetes, some, some pre- Lizzo, pre diabetes, some, pre- yeah. But no, speaking of pocket sized um, people. Oh, your dad texted. Should I open it? I don't know. My phone's been blowing up in my pocket. All right. Speaking of pocket sized people, okay. um, mm-hmm. the Cranstein twins have been oh, circulating. Uh, I don't know who the, this is a picture of what they look like. I think you will recognize oh, I know them. Who they, these are moron. Okay, well, anyways, so they've been circulating the interwebs for the last couple of days. They're political Be- propagandists for Biden. Oh, well, see, I, I don't know who they are, but... Yeah, at least this one is. I don't know about the other one. I didn't know they're, they were they're twin. They're twins. Okay. People didn't know how small they were. Okay. And so that's what has been blowing up the internet of... This is... They're next to um, this guy who is the same size as me. He's like 5'9". Okay. And everybody is just like, what are they like? A hundred pounds soaking wet, you know, oompa loompas. But oh, I do, I do. I oh, yeah, that's a screenshot. I thought that was from Twitter. Yeah, yeah. It's a what well, I, I just I took a. Uh, but th- this is his response: is 
you know, I'm sorry for letting you guys down, all of you Andrew Taint lovers. So I do appreciate that he at least threw that in there. How tall um, is Andrew Tate? Oh God, I don't know. He's probably not very tall either. He's probably like six foot. Um, but no, no, no. That I just appreciate that he had some humor. How tall is Andrew Tate? In being called pocket size. So he's a tiny little human. All right, let's find out what you're there's it's all over the place. Everything from six three, six four, five eleven, and six foot. <laughs> Depend six foot two. There's a different height by everybody. That's funny. But um actually, So he's a fictional human. Actually that brings up um LeBron's son before the the uh NBA um combine or whatever. Okay. Is he in basketball too? His yeah. son? Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, he His son is old enough? Yeah, he played for USC. And, I had no idea. Yeah, we, you and I had talked about this because we talked about how LeBron was bashing USC. He was like, "Oh, I thought it was going to be a better program than it was, or what, something along those lines." I missed so anyway, that so, entirely, but okay. So his son, I think it's Brownie or Brony or something like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> USC and all the other places had him listed like six six, and then at the combine he was like six one. Aww. <laughs> Oh, they they were hoping that he was going to be like daddy, but he's not. Yeah, no. I don't even know how tall LeBron is, but I'm assuming tall. I, he's I, Jordan, I believe, was 6'6". Six, six. I think LeBron is supposed to be like 6'8". But everything's always... Damn, that's a big boy. Everything's always embellished. Like, if I played in the NBA, they would probably say that I was 6'6". Six, six. I'm not 6'6". Six, six. Grow two more inches. Where it counts. I'm just going to get some weights. Eat some weights? No, get some weights. You just tie a string and... What was that Drag movie? your dick down? What was that movie? That was in a movie, I believe. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, my phone was ringing. Mm. <clears throat> um, shit, we're already at 37 minutes. I hate it when you say the time Why? in the episode. Why? I don't know. It's annoying because then people oh. would be like, all right, time to turn it off. I'm gonna Goodbye. Put a big clock right up there. That you have to look at all. Actually, I'll put it right over there. So when you're looking at the cameras, it's <laughs> going to be in the background the entire time. Because if I put it up there, you won't see it past that light. So I'll put it right over there. It'll be mounted right above that light switch. So you're always just staring at it. You just see it's every second tick away, either too fast or too slow. It'll never be in the amount of time that you want it to be. Perfection. He literally put me to sleep yep. saying all of that. There you go. So moving on to the incredible commercials incredible commercials the best advertising campaigns of all time oh are you talking about what you watched yeah, he's yesterday? Calling you now <laughs> must have been he must have been calling me all right we're gonna pause this and come right back because my dad's in town he's calling us all right so going back to oh the, god hi <laughs> didn't know we were back going back to talking about the so the the video that i watched it's a youtuber called sunny v2 i don't know if there's a sunny v1 but <laughs> Um, Sunny V2 does all these pop culture videos. I, there are actually two different things that I want to talk about about him. I watched a video last week with the kids mm -hmm. about that uh, Tones and I. Oh yeah, Dance yeah, Monkey. Dance Monkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you know? Do you know that that song is like about like how miserable her life was and how she wanted to kill herself? What? Yeah. And you told me when you, we first met that it was a dude. I thought it was. So and I was, was like, no, I'm pretty sure it's a woman. She you... was a, she was a street performer. Okay. And people were making fun of her appearance and she was trying to make money and they kept giving her more money, the crazier, wilder, or goofier, or whatever. Basically, the dumber she made herself look. And so the song is about her being their their Dance monkey. Dance monkey. Yeah. Oh, mm, interesting. And okay. she's so that song becoming the it was like the highest charted song ever by a woman or something there's some metric about like the highest ever it was on, like, on Spotify, it was like, specifically it was on like Spotify. 2019 or something that it it's came still, out it still is like one of the most played songs really on spotify specifically so i don't know how that translates to everything else mm -hmm. but it's like the number one song ever by a woman on spotify okay and it's literally she only wrote the song because how much she hated doing that so Every time she makes money off the song, it makes her miserable. And Aww. she has wanted, she has said that she wanted to kill herself 
and that she hates even being famous and everything because of it. Wow. Because it's all about an experience of people harassing her, making fun of her, picking on her, and it was never supposed to be her signature song. Wow. And so now that's what she's known for. Right. Yeah. Well, goes to show you never know what is going on in somebody's life. <laughs> Ever. Yep. So back to the, the same channel, Sunny V2, uh, put out the video yesterday, or maybe it was the day before, and I just watched it yesterday, mm -hmm. um, of the most offensive marketing campaigns right. ever. And it opened up with my favorite Mexican restaurant from my hometown. Hacienda. Yep. They have always had some of the best billboards and funny, like, you look at it, you might not even necessarily like the restaurant or like their food, or you might just not like Mexican food, but you read it and be like, okay, that's funny. Like, I had a shirt when I went to Mexico when I was, like, in middle school mm -hmm. that was that said, like, don't drink the water, drink the margaritas or something like that. And it was from, mm -hmm. like, Carlos O'Brien's or Ho maybe even Hooters. I don't remember what it was. I just remember getting in trouble for wearing it at school and having to put it inside out. <laughs> Hooters. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but they've always had really edgy, funny marketing campaigns. And the one that they opened up with was when I was living there and I was in college after the Army. And it was um, our Kool Aid. Our Kool Aid is, uh, or we're like a cult, but our Kool Aid is better. And it was a picture of a margarita. And then it said, like off to the side, uh, it's to die for. And they were obviously referencing Jonestown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, <laughs> what was the other one that he had talked about? Um, it was something else. It wasn't nearly as bad, but it just happened to be bad timing. Mm hmm. Do you remember what it was? No, I don't remember the second Hacienda good. one. The one that I remember the most is the Subway? no, the Las Vegas one. Oh. Alcohol is cheaper than therapy. It is. I mean, unless you do something that causes you more legal problems. Right. <laughs> don't get a DUI. If you're don't just drink and drive. If you're just going to the liquor store and buying a bottle so that you don't have to go to therapy, then that's probably cheaper. As long as it works for you. As long as it works for you. <laughs> the long-term effects of alcoholism, though. But what, what are the long-term effects of therapy? Nothing? Still dying anyways? Everybody dies eventually. Exactly. So, as you said, YOLO, earlier in the episode, remember? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Throw that around on me. Therapy. Or alcohol. But the Subway one. We already know what you would choose. The sub, Yeah, the Subway one wasn't even made by Subway. Though, right, which right. Which was the funny part. It was yeah. made by The Onion. And there was a guy flying, like, doing kind of one of these motions like he was skydiving. And he was flying down towards two subs that were vertical on the, the ad. And it was like, fly in for our 9-11 anniversary special. For $9.11. Yeah. And... Somebody who knew that it was fake mm -hmm. clipped the ad out or printed, printed it out. Printed it out, took it to a subway. Yeah, went to a subway, recorded it, went to a subway and said, hey, is this valid? And the workers were like, yeah. But the thing that I said to you is like, they're minimum wage, probably high school kids. Not, like they're just. Not, it's not even necessarily about being minimum wage or high, or high school or whatever. There was a subway that I went to all the time that was in a gas station, the corner by where I grew up. Food poisoning. No, it was run Food by poisoning. It was run by these uh, really nice Arabs that would always give me like extra toppings for free and stuff. And if you would have walked in there with a coupon, they don't necessarily know that corporate's not going to honor that. They probably don't. And it's probably like anything else. Like I get flooded with stuff from Google all the time, where Google's like, "We're making a change to this product. We're making a change to this service. Here's our new marketing uh, deck, and here's this, and here's that." Here's the stuff for Android. Here's the stuff for Chrome. Here's the stuff for GCP. Here's the stuff for your Chromebook. Here's the stuff for your doorbells. And here's the stuff for all the other Nest cameras. And I get this, I get so much of it that I don't read the majority of it. Because for one, it doesn't apply to me. Most of it doesn't apply to my clients. But because I'm a partner, they send me all of it. It's probably the same thing. They probably get, you know, monthly and or weekly hey this is the thing that's coming out next week or they you know they get all their window clings that are mailed to them or that they have to 
pay a local service or whatever to print for them and then put them on their windows and hey we're not running this campaign anymore we're not you need to change your menu like they're just doing it because corporate is telling them to do it right or like the franchisee is just telling the manager hey swap this out the the franchisee might know what's really going on the manager doesn't care he's just doing what his boss told him to do so even managerial level I knew a guy that managed like seven or eight subways. Okay. And it was like, you know, we would go in there and he would just give us free food. Lucky you. Yeah. It was good when I was in college because he managed one of the ones that was right by campus. So I could just leave a class. Free lunch every day. I would leave a class, go to the gym, grab a sandwich, go back to class. I had a friend that was, I had a friend that was a manager at Chick Fil A, friend that was a manager of several. Um, Did you get free Chick Fil A? Yeah, Chick Fil A, Subway, and uh, Chipotle. You would literally live off of those three too if he could. <laughs> he would have zero vegetables, just meat, bread, pickles. I put vegetables on my subs. I put spinach and banana peppers and black olives, jalapenos. Okay. Whatever yeah. you say. I do. Whatever you say. The only thing that I, well, and I eat, I put salsa in my uh, chipotle bowls. That's tomatoes. Okay. It's like calling a ketchup a vegetable. It's not. Tomatoes are fruit, but they're still a vegetable. Okay. So yeah, pickles, pickles. So I'm eating, I'm eating pickled cucumbers mm -hmm. on a chicken sandwich. Mm -hmm. I'm eating tomatoes in my chicken and steak and rice bowl. Okay. You know, it'd be the perfect, the four perfect restaurants that if they were in one shopping center. One mile from here? No, like right out at the entrance of the neighborhood. If you had a, if you had a Subway, Chipotle. Chick fil A and Waffle House. Those would be the. And I wouldn't go to any of them. Those would be the four. You would go. You would go to the. You would go to Waffle House to have a grilled cheese. Yeah, you would. It's been <coughs> two and a half years since you've dragged me to one. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. What was the. What was the horse one that they. That, um, the bad advertising company. Oh, the horse meat. Yeah. What company had just come out with horse meat it was being in found it was in, in their burgers? Yeah. yeah, it was a it was a grocery store chain. That was a good one. There was another one that made me laugh really hard too. I knew I should have rewatched it. The Hacienda one, like because he opened with my hometown, mm -hmm. though, that was funny. The responses too. You could tell that the the owner was like, "We were just being funny, right? We didn't." I am only putting out this <laughs> statement because it's the right the thing video. to appease to the other audience I, who don't like this. I loved though because I I I was saying it as it happened, and I hadn't watched the video. I was like, "That's the the place that I miss most about Indiana." And then he showed a screenshot from Reddit, and it was like. This is the only thing that I miss about Indiana. <laughs> it was basically Andrew applying. <laughs> I want to go and find that subreddit because I want to I want to respond to that person and be like, hey. Okay. You're like, me too, bro. Me you, too. Not only did you make it in his video, you made it in ours too. Mm -hmm. Where are you actually from? Do I know you? <laughs> you probably went to high school with him. Probably. Went to a big enough high school. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just talked about this the other day. My the amount of square miles that my high, just my high school, so my school district and one high school right. covered is three times the size of the city of Wilmington. Insane. Insane. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. And it's not a city school. The ci their cities had schools. Mm -hmm. So we made like a big backward C. Mm -hmm. Basically exactly like this because it was like the county line would be where my thumbs are and it was like a thin sliver. Mm -hmm. And then you had granger which was north of mishawaka and east of south bend and then you had all the farmland south of mishawaka and then osceola yeah yeah 
Blah, 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 drive, blah, blah, blah. Some students had to drive past other high schools to go to school. That's crazy to me. Yeah. I don't understand. Because they were not within city limits. Gotcha. Yeah. If you actually looked at your school district maps here, they'd probably be really weird too. Like, no, I, I agree. They are, and they were recently remapped um, by recent when I was in middle school. Um, and that was to make some of the high schools more diverse. Ooh. Ooh. That's another way of saying gerrymandering. Sure. I mean, that's, that, that's how it starts. It starts as gerrymandering and then they're just like, oh, well, we want to make the schools more diverse. No, it's because you wanted more votes in your district. And mm. they're always going to use the kids as the excuse. That's people are talking about that specifically with New York State and New York City right now. They're like, if Trump gets elected, first thing he should do is say, city of New York doesn't get another dime for anything. Damn. The federal government. That's what they're saying he should do to set an example. Like, you can't just go after your political opponents. If you do, there'll be repercussions when your political opponent makes it into office. Okay. But the first thing that they're going to do is say, now oh, there's children starving. And then he'll have to cave because okay. you were attacking these people, mm -hmm. but it only affected, it affected everybody. But they're going to play it off like, no, we're fine. What you did didn't in impact us. Mm -hmm. It probably hurt their wallet a little bit. But when you have that much money, you don't care as much. Whereas any, like a 1% variation up here isn't much, but that 1% is like one or like 10 to 25% down here. Yes. So yeah, political prisoner, whatever is what he's calling mm -hmm. himself, which is kind of funny. I mean, he is, but. <laughs> and apparently uh, his donation spot for his campaign like crashed because so many people were donating. Yeah, yeah. it's, uh, yeah. There was one guy, he didn't post a receipt, but I think he said that he was he hadn't received yet and was going to or whatever, but he said he donated like two hundred and fifty million. And it was somebody that it was somebody that had donated to Hillary's campaign eight years ago. Two hundred and fifty million? Yeah. This guy this guy had like always voted Democrat and yeah. Wow. Yeah. Tell him to donate to our podcast. <laughs> hey, so uh we saw how much liquid we <laughs> yeah. had. Yeah. Yeah, oh, we got a little bit more left you over. You got just a little little taste. Bump it this way. We've got we've got Venmo. No one's got Venmo. Eat my feelings. Yeah. Is that what it is? Eat uh, my feelings. Are there any hyphens in there? No, just eat my feelings. Okay. Anyways, because that's been, what I do. I eat my feelings. This has been another episode of all time. It'll come out on Monday probably. at some point. Yeah, we have to record more. Yes, we do. Because she pushed it into the weekend. We gotta we gotta power through one more episode okay. before we go meet your dad. I need to power through these sniffles, and you need yeah. to figure out where that booger went. Oh, God. <laughs> You're so mean to me. All right, guys. We'll catch you on another one. On another one. Another day. Goodbye. Goodbye.